In this tutorial you will learn how to build atmospheric effects in V-Ray. For this we will first build a basic interior lighting setup and then add volumetric fog in order to render these nice looking sunray effects. So in this video we will discuss on how to set the lighting for this scene in here and more specifically how to add these kind of nice sunray effects that are shining through the window so that you can easily replicate these kind of effects for your own scenes. So the scene that I prepared here, all those models come from either Megascan's asset library or from Chaos Cosmos browser. And if you want to know how to use Megascan's assets, I have an own dedicated video also that you can find in my channel. There you will know how to make them all work correctly with V-Ray and 3ds Max. So now in order to start, I deleted all of the lights and also deleted all of the volumetric effects. So we just start from a completely black image as you can see in here. Now we can just add a V-Ray sun into our scene. Then once we do that, it would ask if it should add a V-Ray sky into the environment map. We don't need this for now because we will use a dome light instead. And now let's put the sun somewhere here that we can see, for example, here, the sun coming through the window in our scene. So now after we have a sun in our scene, we need to take care about the sky because as you can see, the sky is completely black and we don't have any kind of environment lighting from your scene and all the illumination at the moment just comes from this one single sunlight in here. So in order to change that, let's add a V-Ray light in here and then we will switch this light type to dome and then also make sure that the multiplier is set to one. Now you can see that there's something already happening here outside of the window, but now we just need to add our V-Ray sky into this map slot in here. So now let's add a V-Ray sky in here and then just confirm that everything is working. So that means if we are lowering the sun, then our sky should be getting darker. But that's at the moment not what's happening. We have a constant brightness in here. That means the sky is not completely linked to the sun yet. And this we can easily fix by just loading here the sky map into our material editor. And then once we do that, we just specify our sun node and then we just pick the sun in here. And now if we lower the sun, you can see that the sky itself will become darker. You can see now it has this kind of like dark bluish color in here. And then once we go higher, the sun will become or the sky will become much brighter and so on. So this way we know that the sky is now linked to our sun and everything is working correctly. Now we just need to select our dome light and then make sure that we use this adaptive dome option in here. And this way we get much better and faster render results. And the reason why we use a dome light and not use an environment in here with a V-Ray sky is that the dome light supports multi-important sampling. If you want to know what this is and find out more about this, you can also check out an interior lighting tutorial that I have, which goes into much more detail about how to set up some lighting for some interior scenes. So now that we have our basic lighting in place, we can now set up these cool sunray effects. And those are actually quite intense to render. That's why I'm using a uh, denoiser in order to get a much faster result. So I'm using here this Intel Open Image denoiser. That's an AI denoiser. So it has to kind of like guess how the final result will look like. And that's why while rendering, the result first might look a little bit blotchy and a little bit blurry. And it should clear up after a while. But I think like this, we will be able to see the finished or near finished result much faster. Now in order to add our fog, we need to go to this render tab and then choose the environment or press the 8 key on our keyboard. And then down here under the atmosphere options, we can add our V-Ray environment fog. Once we do that, we need to reinitialize the render and then see what the result will be. So we can see we have some kind of effect already, but it looks like the fog is being cut off here. And that comes from this fog height. So at the moment, the fog cuts off at one meter. If I go, for example, lower, you can see now the fog cuts off at 50 centimeters already. And for this room, let's choose, for example, a value of three meters. And once we do this, we can see that the result now becomes very dark because we have the whole scene now filled up with very thick fog that goes from zero to three meters. Our camera itself is also inside this fog and the light has a very difficult time now to pass through this fog and that's why this whole scene here is extremely dark. Now we need to find a way to make this fog here more transparent so that more light can enter into our room again. 
And this we can control with this fog distance and fog transparency parameters. So for the fog distance, the higher this value here is, the more transparent our fog will become. For example, if I choose a value of 200 centimeters, then already a lot more light is able to enter through this fog here. We get a lot more light here into our room. So we can choose, for example, a value of 1000. Then we can see that now our room becomes already much more bright again. At the same time, we have these kind of nice sun ray effect here that's coming in through the window. We can also use this fog transparency here in order to determine the transparency of our fog. And that just works like this, that you increase the brightness and then our fog becomes more transparent. For example, if I go more closer to white, then you have only very little fog in the scene can just switch to this atmosphere render element in here so we can see we still have some fog but it becomes more and more transparent and the lower we go with this value the stronger our fog will become let's go back to our rgb color what we can also do with this fog transparency is to tint it into a different color tone for example let's choose this kind of reddish color tone and this way it will tint all of the objects that we see through the fog they will be tinted in this case in this reddish color in here. Let's go back to the default value. And then you can also choose a different kind of fog color in here in order to tint the light that comes through the fog. For example, let's choose here a reddish color. And then you can see that now here our fog itself is being tinted to this reddish color in here. We also have the option to scatter the GI and that's turned off by default because that's quite heavy to calculate. So once I enable this, you will see that the room becomes a little bit brighter and also takes a little bit longer until the denoiser kicks in because the calculation is more complicated as said. And now you see that the room is brighter because the GI is now also being scattered by the fog. And in my case, I don't really want that. I can turn this off here to go back to how it was before. And you can also easily fake this effect by playing with this fog emission parameter in here. So here you can use a brighter value and then the fog itself is basically emitting some light. And in this case, it's creating some kind of similar effect, but you can also do something crazy by just adding like different colors in here and generate some very surreal effects using this fog emission parameters in here. So down here in those map slots, you can add different kind of procedural 3D textures so that you can have a variation in the fog color, the transparency and so on. So while you probably can get some interesting results, for me personally, I never add anything here in these map slots because as soon as you add a procedural texture map in here, the whole rendering becomes extremely slow. And for me, at least personally, it's not so much fun to use it anymore. And if I wanted to create some more complicated effect than this, I probably also wouldn't use this V-Ray environment fog. So that's why I normally never add anything in those map slots in here. Down here, you can find several options in order to speed up the effect. And for example, we can choose to not affect the reflections and refractions in our scene by the fog. And then also, for example, not affect the shadows and the GI. And like this way, it will render much faster, but the result will look less realistic because certain kind of effects are being left out. But if you want to, that's a way how to speed up this whole effect in here. I will switch this on again so that we get a more realistic result. And now lastly, let's talk about this gizmo tab in here. And that's actually quite handy because we can define that our fog only is in a certain area. So let's add this box in here and then also make it not renderable. And this way we can use it as a gizmo. So once I put this box here in this gizmo and then I restart the rendering, now the fog is only inside this box in here. And now I can basically move this box here back and forth. You can see that the fog is now only present in this box in here. So you can get some interesting kind of results by having different kind of gizmos. For example, we have now the effect that the fog only starts here because the gizmo is only in this part in the scene in here. So that's quite interesting results you can get with this. But now let's first stop this 
and then also delete this gizmo here again because we don't need it. And then there's also a different option here that we can add different lights here to our fog and then the fog would only be affected by those lights. For example, we can say that we only use here our sunlight and we turn off this option here to use all the lights. But in V-Ray 5.2, there's actually a much better way to do that, which I'm gonna show you now in a second. So since V-Ray 5 update 2, each light has this new effect atmosphere parameter down here. And there you can for each light determine the contribution to our atmospheric effects. So here for the sunlight, for example, we can turn off the effect and then now we still have the contribution from our skylight. If I go to the render layer, I can see the skylight is still affecting here our atmosphere, but the sunlight itself is not anymore. I can also turn it on again and then I can tweak the effect here with this multiplier. For example, if I want to have it very subtle, I can use a much lower value in here and then this whole thing becomes a little bit more transparent we don't have to dial in any of these other settings in here we can also have it like extremely faint or we can just add it much stronger for example value of three and then this whole thing will become much more strong and like this you have a lot of options to tweak for each light the effect in here and just get exactly the kind of result that you want I think in my case, I will just add this here to 0.25 and then go to my skylight and then also reduce the effect of the skylight here a little bit and maybe like this way, get a more interesting image. So that concludes everything that I want to talk about here, the V-Ray environment fog. That's the way I normally tend to use it. And I think for these kind of effects, it really can give you a very nice result and it can add a lot of so to speak, atmosphere to your renderings. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to this channel, like and leave a comment below. And if you wanna go the extra mile, you can also support me on Patreon and there you can also watch additional bonus videos, whole courses and download the scene files for all of my tutorials. So I hope to see you over there and see you in the next tutorial. Until then, take care.